Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Eric, and I thought today what we would talk about is some of the basic skills that you could look at as far as trying to do early on uh, and what employers of repair shops and stuff are looking for when it comes to hiring people. Now, the big key to see it depends on which if you if you want to have your own shop and you're going to wear two hats that's the mechanic's hat and that's the owner's hat then you have two different sets of skills that you're going to have to learn so if we look at just the mechanic side the mechanical side some of the things that are a plus are welding you know you don't have to you know get into tig and all that i mean just basic welding is good and for you young bucks that are still in high school and stuff that they do offer programs through BOCES and that of advanced welding if you wanted to go further than that for working on lawnmower decks and around the shop you don't need to be certified. If you want to make your profession in welding, then you do want to be certified because that's you can get into the union that way. The ability to look at things and tear something apart. See, that's half the battle. I know a lot of people that can tear things apart. It's how to put them all back together again. So you have to have some ability in how to. And the way I teach is if you take a carburetor off, take put your put the stuff in the order that you took it off, so that when you start to put it back together, you're starting over here, and then working your way back to where you were as it was hooked to the engine easy right not so easy because a lot of times if, if you've ever looked at an old or mechanics death or bench and stuff it's it's littered everywhere because he knows what he's doing he could throw these parts into a bag and put them back together but for you i want you to have a nice clean tabletop a bench Put out a white cloth, you know, tissues or whatever, uh, paper towels, and, and learn to dissect. And then get a carburetor kit. Well, you don't need to get a carburetor kit. Take it apart today and then tomorrow. Put it all back together and see if you can do that. That's a learning ability. With most employers... They're looking at the ability to learn and the willingness to learn. That's, they're two different things. The willingness, you may be willing to do anything, but maybe your abilities, your skills, you know, aren't where they want you to be. When I went to work for a mining company, my willingness to learn and my ability to learn were critical. The willingness to learn, because I had no prior experience with a lot of their equipment. I had experience on farm equipment, but I didn't have any prior experience on mining equipment. But their hiring group saw that I had the willingness to learn. And if I was a farmer, most farmers had the ability to learn equipment. And one th thing I noticed and I excelled at was that this company was more than willing to teach me anything I wanted to learn and I excelled quickly because I felt that the more I knew the more value I had to that company so 
when it comes to if you're looking at getting hired by a small engine repair business they're going to be looking at the same thing you know willingness and ability you could teach anybody to be a parts replacer you can't teach everybody to be a mechanic that comes with time that comes with learning that comes with see the thing is is a lot of people are afraid to make a mistake or to screw up don't I'm telling you right now you are gonna make mistakes you are gonna screw up at times it's what you do with the situation that will define you it's, and that, if you screwed up it's to not repeat it again that you learn something from that experience and employers look at that you know <clears throat> the main thing with making mistakes is did you learn something from it and that's going to be anything in life whether it's relationships jobs uh, everything is the the people that excel at anything are ones that have made numerous mistakes but it's they learn from that mistake if you don't learn from your mistake you will repeat it if you learn from it, then you can keep stepping, stepping, stepping. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If you want to get into the mechanical side, is soldering. Now, we do a lot of soldering here, you know, for parts. Um, it's being able to use torches, cutting torches, whether you're using the soldering tip, the cutting tip or the heating tip we have three different ones that we use here at this shop one of the other things that's really good is being able to document your work and what do I mean by that well we have two different sheets here at the shop one sheet is a mechanic sheet and they put on that sheet all the parts they put into it and they also keep track of the time and I know a lot of shops will take and have three different customers' machines going at the same time. They're jumping back in between these and they're charging all three for the, the time. We don't do that. We charge for the actual time that's on that machine. Then it gets on, it goes only so far, has to wait for parts, shuts it down, goes to the next one. Again, works so far, has to shut it down, wait for parts, that's where time clock stop you have to be able to document all that stuff and when you hand the sheet to me then I have to take and I put it into our system and it comes up with all the parts that were put on that machine the billable hours that are on that machine what we found is is on that sheet and I print it out and I give it to the customer and then one one of them goes into staple to the mechanics slip that goes into a file for taxes and stuff so you got to be willing to document and remember what you're doing when you do it that means if you put a couple spark plugs in a machine and you go oh shoot I forgot you know you didn't document that's costing the shop money I mean, we don't want to overcharge the cut the cut the customer but we also don't want to undercharge them as well so those are some of the things that would be helpful to learn getting into the business now as I mentioned in the beginning you have two different hats now if you're wearing the owner's hat as well you have to have the ability to communicate well with customers you have to be able to put things in layman's terms of what you did to the machine most of the time all they care about is that it's working but some like to know and don't go into you know garbage just 
in layman's terms, tell them what you did. This is what we did, blah, blah, blah. And that was the issue, and the issue is solved. Secondly, you need to have good customer service skills. And you need to let that customer know that you have their back. They need to trust you. If you have a customer that trusts you, then they will never ask anything of you. You know what? I, what do I mean by that? They know that you're doing what's best by them, and that's how I've always run this shop. We've done things sometimes it wasn't always best for the shop, but it was best for the customer. And my customers know that I'm very trustworthy that I'm not going to bullshit them. I'm not going to charge them for stuff that isn't that we didn't replace. And I'm not going to replace stuff that didn't need to be replaced. I mean, so having that ability to gain their trust, customer service skills, you are going to run into some customers no matter what you do. You are not going to make them happy. And my tendency as a shop owner is I weed them out quickly. I don't need the headaches. I don't need, uh, you know, some people feel that screaming and hollering is going to get them reduced bill and it usually does. But there's, it's a learned behavior. And when I say a learned behavior is they've learned that if they do that, that they're going to get something out of it or not have to pay as much. But in the end, when it comes to our shop, they lose because now they have to go to somebody else. And see, I'm already partners with my, the other shops in the area. We're all good friends. And we do talk about the bad ones to stay away from so if you're one of them people get the heads up that just because you burnt this guy from screaming and hollering the next guy's not going to be so happy with you not, he may not even take on your work i hope some of this stuff has been beneficial to you like i say the key is the willingness and the ability you know it is two different things. Always be open and willing to learning anything new. And if you ever do get a chance to work with an older mechanic, ask questions. But then zip it. And listen. And nine times out of ten, if you come to him with that attitude, he will teach you. There's always going to be that one that stubborn-headed and fearful that if he teaches you his job, that he's going to lose his job to you. And that's not your fault. That's his insecurity. All right. So we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching.